Hey homeschoolers, I'm Melissa Webb, former full-time classroom teacher and homeschool mom turned full-time business CEO and encourager to homeschool families everywhere. I want to give you sound, educational, practical tips and advice at the same time making sure that you're enjoying the family journey that you are on. So if you are looking for a place to be encouraged and inspired, you have found the perfect podcast. Homeschooling is a work of heart is truly the perfect place to start. So welcome. Let's jump in. Hello, friend, and welcome back to the Homeschool is a Work of Heart podcast. I'm so happy that you are joining us. You probably homeschool, most likely, or you used to homeschool and you just still show up because you can't get enough. I love it. There are so many reasons why people homeschool these days, and we actually have a few homeschoolers in our program who have avid golfers in the family, and they need to homeschool because of the demands of their sport, which is pretty amazing that we can do all the things these days. But more than just a sport, I was thinking about how golf is such a mental game. And don't you think parenting is as well? (laughs) Just as golfers have golf shots that certainly disappoint from time to time, I was thinking how homeschool parents can also be heard from time to time whispering under their breath, well, I didn't see things going that direction today. Can anybody relate? Well, if you're a golfer, you're very fortunate to have the mulligan. Are you familiar with this term? If you are not familiar with the term mulligan, I am about to change your understanding of why our local putt-putt golf and family fun center is named the same, Mulligan Family Fun Center. Yes, a mulligan is a golf term for a do-over. In golf, mulligans are to be used recreationally They are usually given a certain not overly excessive number that's agreed upon with the group that's playing. And a mulligan is used with the intention of keeping a game going, but in a more enjoyable fashion versus a frustrating one. It's terrible to start a game, tee off, and you're out of bounds. So being able to call a mulligan can remove that frustration and give you that fresh start. Now, in golf, when a player calls a mulligan, he or she is allowed to retake a shot without some penalty and hopefully correct whatever the mistake was, thus moving forward with a much happier outlook and positive attitude. I will tell you that this past week, I found myself driving and saying, I just need a mulligan today. (laughs) It was one of those days where one thing after the next just went sideways. I, I wasn't expecting some things that happened to happen. And while I know that some days are like this, I was actually driving on the street where we have our family fun center called Mulligan. And I was on my way um, from the library because our power had gone out. Anyway, long story, I I drove right past there and I just thought to myself, that's what I need. I need a mulligan today. And that was this week's inspiration. And I just wonder, do you ever experience days, especially school days, when the things that you planned don't go as planned? Of course you do. I know you do. We all do. It's normal. It's part of life. And like in golf, where a mulligan allows someone to reset and try again, I think a do-over day in homeschooling, in life in general, can also provide a similar fresh start. Sometimes we moms need the mulligan. Maybe dad needs a mulligan. Maybe the kids, maybe it's the dog. Is it the dog to blame? Perhaps. But whoever needs to call Mulligan, well, I just believe that right should be theirs. It could be anything. Maybe you're trying to teach a concept in math 
and the kids are not getting it. Maybe some kind of unexpected chaos arose. Uh, For me, all of the power on our street went out unexpectedly. It could be more of an emotional day. Maybe emotions are running high in your home. Frustration has peaked. Maybe a full-on breakdown has occurred. It could be anything. But whatever it is, a do-over day, even a half a day, can allow everyone some grace. We need that grace to reset and adjust and approach the second half of our day or maybe a whole new day with a renewed mindset. Not only golfers need a second chance. (laughs) So I'm bringing Mulligan into the homeschool world. I'm bringing Mulligan into your life. We can't call Mulligan all day, every day. We are going to need something more than the Mulligan And that's where I feel coaching is really important. We need that person, that cheerleader in our life who comes alongside and encourages us, even if we've called the mulligan. So again, I'm going to go back to my golfer analogy. Golfers are coached extensively on how not to let the one bad swing ruin the entire game. They cannot call Mulligan, 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 especially if it's an official game, you can't call any. But similarly, homeschooling parents should not let one challenging day or even a rough week define their homeschooling journey. And you can't call mulligan all day or all week. Eventually, you're going to have to be coached into finding techniques and ways to reset your mindset So that while you called the mulligan and you want to do a redo, all good, I'm all for the mulligan, you also realize the show must go on. You still have to show up to the tee. You still have 18 holes to go, okay? So I'm going to be your coach today or your cheerleader. Call me whatever you like. I have three tried and true techniques that I want to share with you. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, technique number one, and by the way, I'm not going to tell you anything today that you haven't already heard or that you're going to be like, I'm mind blown. Why didn't anybody ever tell me that? Nope. These are tried and true because they are repetitive things that have worked. All I'm going to do is take some information that's swirling around in that amazing brain of yours. You have so much information in, in that brain. It's all in these filing cabinets. All I'm going to do is help you open up a file cabinet, open up a file, and pull out something that maybe you just haven't looked at recently, okay? So so let's go for it. Number one, simply take a break. (laughs) It's so simple, right? So in my golfer analogy here, let's just imagine the golfer has called mulligan. That golfer is going to step away from the tee, take a deep breath, This is that break part. They're going to reimagine the drive. They're going to maybe speak or think some positive affirmation, a mantra, maybe a scriptural verse. They're going to reset and they're going to step back in and retry the shot. For us as homeschool parents, when the day feels off track or maybe it's just the lesson, you're going to take a purposeful break and you're going to reset. There's nothing wrong with that. Go for a walk. Go have a snack together. Engage in something fun. It should be low pressure activities, maybe working on a puzzle. That's something you can just keep going, go work on it for five minutes, 10 minutes. You've reset. This is a mental and emotional breather, and it can be extremely effective. Breaks, frequent breaks, help regulate emotions. They also reduce frustration and they allow for fresh perspective so that when you return to learning, you have done the reset you need to do. Studies actually show strategic breaks increase focus and productivity. I don't know if you know about the Pomodoro technique. Are you familiar with this? I will link to an article. This was a technique I learned back in college using 
shorter learning periods followed by rewarding breaks to get the most successful learning and engaged learners. So I don't know, should I do a whole, I could do a whole podcast on the Pomodoro technique. There's that much to teach you if you're not familiar with it. Uh, Like I said, I'll link some more information and you can always let me know if you're like, yeah, teach us about that. Anyway, I used it back in the day, back in the classroom, but I also used it at home. And the goal is to shorten your work sessions and then take these deliberate short breaks that are rewarding. It's important. If you think of it this way, that the focused learning times are using that prefrontal cortex, that part of your mind, that elevated thinking that sets us apart from any other animal or mammal. It's what makes us humans. So you do want to engage that part of the brain. But there's another part of our brain called the reptilian brain. There's all kinds of names actually for it. But I like to think of it as the child brain. (laughs) It's the little kid in me. And we need to engage both parts of the brain. That's what the Pomodoro technique, what the researchers did all around that back in the 80s. The Pomodoro effect is we want to engage the prefrontal cortex for an extended amount of time and then let the little kid in us go have fun. So the break does need to be rewarding. You're not like, I'm going to go take a break and go do my bills. (laughs) That's not very, I mean, I don't know. Some of you are weird and you'd be like, are you kidding? I love that stuff. Good for you. If it's rewarding, go do that. For kids, it could be let them go outside and shoot some hoops. Read a comic book. Work on an ongoing craft. Again, these are short breaks, five, 10 minutes, but they're frequent. Go make a healthy snack. Go walk the dog around the block. If it's fun and rewarding, that's the key. Okay. The second thing you're going to want to do after you call your mulligan, okay, you need to reassess. You need to reassess your plan, maybe simplify it even. So let's go back to my golfer analogy. We've got our golfer called the mulligan, and now she's going to reassess her strategy. She doesn't just go right back up and take the next swing. No, 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 no. She needs to think about it. She wants to reassess what didn't work there. What might she try differently? It's no guarantee that it's going to work perfectly, but it's with intention. Without doing that, she likely is going to end up in the same sand trap again and again. It's not about just, I took a break, let's jump back in. No, no, no. You want to reassess why it wasn't working, why you needed to call the mulligan in the first place. So pay attention to strategy. Let's use a math lesson. Let's say it's not going well. What you might want to do is research a different way to teach it, okay? That would be something you could do to reassess. You also could consider lightening things up. Are you expecting your nine-year-old to sit still for an hour straight working on that math lesson? I'm going to send you back to the Pomodoro technique. That's too long. Research supports that smaller, manageable tasks reduce stress and improve the quality of learning. That's going to make it easier for the child, but also for her teachers. Okay? Okay. Let's talk about the third technique. Focusing on progress over perfection. Again, this isn't something that you haven't heard a hundred times. Our young golfer very quickly learns that he must accept Not every shot will be perfect. It's not the goal. Progress is the goal. That consistent improvement over time. That's called progress. That's the goal. And it's true for you too and for your kiddos. You want to embrace your flexible lifestyle. You homeschool. Lucky you. You do have room to breathe. So don't forget to breathe. You can take a whole day off. If the whole week has felt like you needed a mulligan every day, then Friday becomes fun day. Go to a matinee. Incorporate more playtime at home with your kids. I want you to remember that learning is happening all the time, not just with your very strict learning schedule. 
10 o'clock we're doing this, 10.30 we're doing that, 11 o'clock, 11.30. I'm all for a very strategic learning schedule. Again, as you might imagine, a lot of breaks in their fun breaks, making homeschooling super fun. You have so many more hours that you can do your learning. But here's the other thing. Don't forget that learning happens all the time. Yes, even when playing Yahtzee. Even when playing Yahtzee, you're learning all kinds of things. Certainly some math skills, for sure. Counting up numbers and and all that sort of thing. But you're also learning about good sportsmanship as well. You're also learning about odds. It's valuable. Playing is valuable learning. And focusing and acknowledging that progress is being made is really important. Progress is not meant to be perfect, but progress is permanent. We're not going for perfect learning, but we are going for permanent learning. And progress is going to lead you there. Our goal as homeschooling teachers is to build lifelong learning skills. With that, you're building resilience. I can figure this out. I know I can learn new things. The long-term academic success, it's going to follow in time. So please do not get too upset or frustrated. No throwing clubs around the house. (laughs) We want to understand not every shot's going to be perfect. That's okay. We're going for progress. That's going to lead to permanent success. And that's way more important than perfect success, which is an illusion anyway. Okay. Okay. Quick little recap here. You're having a rough day. Your kids maybe are having a rough day. You want to call a mulligan. Great. Do it. We all need to call mulligan from time to time, but don't just call the mulligan. Do these three things. Take a break on purpose, and in a rewarding way. That will help reset your mindset. Number two, reassess what it was you were doing. Potentially change or simplify what it is that was creating the conflict or the frustration. And number three, when you get back to it, remember to focus on progress not perfection. Okay. Now don't forget, like I said, you do need to call a mulligan. Your kids need to call a mulligan from time to time. What I really hope is that you teach this term to your kids. It's a great vocabulary word. You've got a new vocabulary word for the day if you didn't already know it. Maybe your kids don't know it. Teach it to them. And consider making it a lighthearted term for your family, something that maybe only your family kind of has the inside secret on how to use it. Make it fun in your home. Home should be fun. It should be lighthearted. So the next time, I don't know, maybe dad's going to overcook the burgers on the grill. Mom's going to forget about the dentist appointment. Maybe somebody's going to knock over the orange juice container Maybe the dog is going to run in with muddy paws. In unison, I want to imagine your family shouting, looks like we need a mulligan over here, right? Everybody in your family will know what that means. We all need a do-over from time to time. And hey, do you need a do-over with last month's academic writing? (laughs) Maybe it didn't go so well. Maybe you're like, ah, it's already halfway through the semester and I haven't yet finished one academic essay with my kiddos. I've got you covered. So come on over and see what we offer to help with that. You can find us at writeonweb.com. Right on, my friend. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and listening this week. Hey, if this was something that you found valuable, don't forget you want to subscribe or follow so that every time a new episode is dropped, you'll be the first to know. And hey, before you go, if you are looking to get some of this 
academic writing under your belt and outsourced so that it's one less thing freeing you up to enjoy more time with your family, hey, you're going to want to head over to Write on Web com to see what kinds of resources and materials I have available for you. I will look forward to seeing you there and I will look forward to seeing you here in our next episode. Right on!